What's up guys, it's Bliskin here, and two years ago I made a video that went through the different ways that guns can be balanced in video games. And while back then I thought the video was clear, concise, and brought up everything I wanted to bring up, looking back on it now, said games. The first means that a developer can do this, we'll call the rife audio issues, the way I'd ramble on about things that were irrelevant. I feel like there's a need to redo that video and just talk about the spectrum of balancing, as we'll call it. Now on this spectrum of balancing, I feel like there are three primary ways in which developers can balance out their weapons for a game. On one end of the spectrum, we have what I like to call single purpose weapons. In the middle, we have the supersize me approach. And on the other end, we have what I like to call a level up system. And while games usually find themselves in between these three points, I feel like going over said three points would be a great way to develop your understanding of how your favorite video games balance out their weapons and what makes them feel the way they do when you play them. So with that being said, let's start with single purpose weapon balancing. What characterizes a game's weapon balancing as single purpose is if the sandbox of weapons within a video game don't have any repeats. What exactly do I mean by that? Well, if there's a gun that fulfills a certain role, let's say a proverbial sniper rifle. If there's a sniper rifle in a video game, it is the only sniper rifle. There is no other weapon in the game that can do what this imaginary sniper rifle can do. And therefore, the player must familiarize themselves with the strengths and weaknesses of this one sniper rifle. And as they play the game and they get better with the usage of this sniper rifle, that's where they get their sense of empowerment from. An example of a single purpose game would be Resident Evil 3 Remake. In the game, Jill Cutie Patootie Valentine only really uses three weapons for the majority of the game. The Glock, the Benelli, and the Grenade Launcher. Later on you also get a Desert Eagle, and then there's Carlo's Assault Rifle. Now each and every one of these weapons fulfill a different role and they don't overlap. For example, the Glock is your mid-range, low damage, but reliable sidearm. So wherever you go throughout the game, you're probably always gonna have ammo in this. It's not gonna be the best at crowd clearing or stopping enemies in their tracks, but if you plant yourself still and you take your time, you'll be able to thin out the zombie hordes in front of you. The Benelli, on the other hand, works as more of a power weapon. If you take this out, you know if it's a normal size zombie in front of you, you're probably going to take it down in one hit. If not, and you're facing a larger opponent, this will at the very least stop them from advancing towards you. The grenade launcher acts as a power weapon in the sense that this is a guaranteed kill or area of effect weapon. There's multiple different uses for it. You can use it to lay mines, you can use flame rounds, you can use acid rounds. Each of these rounds act a little differently from each other, but they all fulfill the same goal. To stop larger enemies or groups of enemies dead in their tracks and most likely, unless it's a boss fight against Nemesis, kill them. The Desert Eagle kind of fulfills the same role as it did in Resident Evil 2 Remake in the sense where it's the game's quote-unquote sniper weapon. Now of course this isn't a sniper rifle, however the high damage and longer range attributes of it make it kind of act like the Resident Evil counterpart to a traditional sniper rifle. Lastly, you're going to have Carlos's assault rifle. Now this acts as a low damage but like crowd clearing stun weapon in the sense that you can either empty out a mag into a zombie to take it down, or you could spray it across a bunch of zombies to slow them down and give you the time you need to slip by them. Now, besides these main weapons, of course, you have some bonus weapons that you can unlock, easy mode weapons, and a railgun that's context specific to a given boss fight, but the core weapons in this game all have their own identity. When I'm using the Glock, it's never going to feel the same as when I'm using the Desert Eagle. When I'm using the shotgun, it's never going to feel the same as Carlos's assault rifle. And the same thing goes with the grenade launcher. They all have their own identity and purpose, and I get empowered through the gameplay by understanding that purpose. I get good at the game by understanding what enemies are better suited for the pistol, what enemies are better suited for the grenade launcher. 
when to save Desert Eagle ammo, and when to actually use it. That's what makes me feel like I'm good at the game, understanding the roles each of these weapons play. And that's what single purpose weapon balancing is all about. Now going over to the other end of the spectrum, we have Far Cry 4, which uses a level up system within its gameplay. Now, what's a level up system you might ask? Well, in Far Cry 4, you'll start off with a starter AK assault rifle. This weapon does a decent amount of damage, but is very loud and will draw a lot of attention to you as the player. As you continue playing through the game, you end up unlocking the MS-16. This has power and can be suppressed. So you get a step up from the AK in the sense that you still have that same kind of firepower, but now you can be sneaky as you go around. Another category of weapons to which this applies to would be the sniper rifles. You start off with one of the worst sniper rifles ever, the SVD. Then you move up to the Remington 700, which can be suppressed and is actually accurate. Then you move up to the Z93. This does more damage, but still has a slow fire rate. By the end of the game, you get the SA-50, which just shreds the entire game. It has crazy amounts of damage, kills most enemies in one shot, it has great range, and it's suppressed. So this is a level up system, where I get empowered by unlocking new guns. There are a whole bunch of guns that pretty much do the same thing, like all the snipers are used for sniping. However, I start with one that's bad, and I start feeling stronger as I unlock better weapons. So, this redundancy for the purpose of making the player feel as though they are progressing as they play the game is what a level up style of balancing weapons is all about. Now, between the spectrum, you get a whole bunch of different things. You get games that are kind of single purpose, but low key have certain weapon categories that serve as level up systems. A good example of this would be Metal Gear Solid 3 Snake Eater, where for the most part, every weapon is directed towards a certain role. But then when it comes to automatic weapons, you go from the AK to a suppressible M16 to an LMG. So there's like elements of level up there. On the other side, you have some level up games or games that mostly feature level up weapons, but then we'll have one one-off weapon. Again, Snake Eater could be used as an example of this in the sense that, yeah, there's the level up category in the sense of automatic weapons. However, there is only one shotgun, and that shotgun serves a very different role from everything else in the game. So in that sense, a lot of games can float on either side of the spectrum or show characteristics of both. But for this last category, I want to go over those games that sit in the middle, that are neither level up and that are neither single purpose. I like to call these Super Size Me. The last category we're going to be going over, Super Size Me, in case you don't understand that reference because you're too young or uncultured, Super Size Me was a documentary critiquing McDonald's for being bloated and giving out too much to people that wasn't really healthy. In this regard, I compare it to video game weapon balancing because there are certain games that just have too many weapons for their own good, that their sandbox just becomes bloated. Take Titanfall 2 for example. I love Titanfall 2. However, there's like almost, what, like 50 guns in there, but there's only three worth using. In the campaign, the Mastiff pretty much dominates every single enemy. I'm not really inclined to use any other weapon besides explosives or snipers here and there, because this weapon will just serve me fine. In multiplayer, why would I use many other guns besides the Spitfire? Of course you have some SMGs and assault rifles that shred, but the Spitfire is king in multiplayer. So why would I really use anything else, never mind another LMG? You have all these guns, but only select few are worth using, and this is why I compare this type of weapon balancing to that McDonald's documentary because it's just supersizing. It's just bloated, unhealthy, and there's so much there that doesn't need to be there. But yeah, that's essentially the three ways I've identified that developers tend to balance out their weapons in games. It's either single purpose, like Resident Evil 3, it's either level up, like Far Cry 4, it's somewhere along the spectrum, or it's in that uncomfortable spot in the middle that's like McDonald's. But yeah, what do you guys think? Do you have a preferred method of weapon balancing? Do you like the Super Size Me method? Am I just weird for not liking it? 
Are you more of a fan of single purpose? Do you like level up systems? What makes you have more fun as the player? Let me know down in the comments below. This has been Pliskin, over and out.